Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, this question uh, that's sent in asks a pretty simple one, and I'm curious if any of you have a different perspective on all this. But uh, let's let's give it a try. It says, "Hello, Perch. Thank you for continuing your show. I'm, I mean, I'm burning through videos, but okay. Thank you for continuing your show. I am curious. When did the trend of replacing legacy characters with new modern interpretations begin? It feels like for the majority of comics." The big two publishers tried to specifically not replace legacy heroes with new versions of themselves or drew extraordinary attention to the idea that a character could be different, i.e. i.e. John Stewart versus Hal Jordan or Jim Rhodes versus Tony Stark. Recently, however, it seems like comics have taken more of an effort to change legacy characters into new modern uh, versions of themselves. My question is, am I remembering this wrong? Because when I brought this up on CBR, I was immediately attacked as being a, a okay, an istophobe, all, okay, all the names. Uh, I was immediately attacked uh, and told that comics have always been this way, and I was just remembering it wrong. But am I? Let me know, oh perch. Okay. Um, so, again, let's see how our memories hold up here. Uh, specifically, if I'm, if I'm listening to this mail properly and, and understanding it, we're talking about legacy characters, i.e., let's say Thor, being replaced with a different person, but still carrying the mantle of Thor, or Captain America being replaced by a different Captain America. And the question is, when did this really begin, and were comics always this way? Well, from my perspective, uh, comic books were not always this way. Um, I don't think that uh, comics, I, I definitely don't think comics, you know, we'll put it this way. I, I think we'll do it the way you were trying to do it in the email. Um, how, how frequently or how often um, did this happen? Uh, what did happen were that comics were replaced kind of wholesale with new teams or new characters. Like, for example, the X-Men. You had the original five X-Men, and then you had the all-new, all-different X-Men, and they got a whole different team. What you didn't get were, you know, new characters saying, I'm now Cyclops, or I'm now, you know, Angel or the Beast. You had, you know, completely brand new characters doing that. And um, I think that is, that that's that's really what, comics were like for a long period of time you you know and, and actually when did they start doing this i would say kind of late 90s early 2000s which may be you know uh, later than many of you think but if you look at comics and you look at kind of some of the changes that were made you look at the whole uh, tony stark jim rhodes uh iron man switch and first off and i mentioned this in videos before there was a big storyline really that was created in order for that to happen you know they were diving into Tony drinking, they were, they were kind of, they really sold the case of what happens when, you know, somebody who's a hero does a bad job of, uh, you know, living up to the ideals that, uh, that they, that they should be living up to, you know, what, what happens when, um, you know, the character itself needs to change because the original hero is not capable of doing what, uh, what they used to do. Uh, and in that instance, I think you, you have a lot of cases where, I mean, well, same thing, Hal Jordan, Jim Rhodes, or, or you know, later Kyle, when uh, Hal Jordan went, went all crazy. You had those kinds of changes that would take place, but they were far and few between. You didn't do, you know, you had Barry Allen, you went to uh, Wally West. Um, you certainly had kind of junior versions, things like Kid Flash, uh, Kid, you know, Green Arrow, Red Arrow, all that kind of stuff. You had Speedy. Um, you had kind of different um, legacy families, if you will, of characters. But you didn't really get into a lot of, of the actual main character being replaced. And the big reason why is, um, is not, you know, a, a terrible mystery. Actually, Jim Shooter did an interview, and I've actually, I pulled the quote up here. Uh, it says, um, um, you didn't mess around with the main character because odds were people would drop the title. And we need to keep those readers coming back. You could do a surprise change but only for a short period of time and only through a storyline. That was a general logic. Um, 
I, I would say that uh, I said late 90s, which again, I'm guessing most people answering that question would say it came about 10 years later. But if you look at the idea of like Kid Tony Stark, remember that? Where suddenly it's like, hey, you know, we need to appeal to a new audience. So let's make an Iron Man's not selling that well. So let's make him a younger version of himself. Do you remember that? You know, a, a, a comics started to fool around with that kind of stuff where you would put, uh, you know, somebody random in the, in the costume. And then it, it kind of, uh, I would say there was a change in mentality that went on in comics where it felt like previously um, you had, you, you basically had um, the publishers trying to put out as many comics as possible. It felt like the goal was, hey, we need to get lots and lots of characters out to the mix because that's what's uh, going to make us a lot of money. And that's, you know, that's the, it's better to have more seemed to be the logic. And then I would say, you know, you hit the 90s and you hit the early 2000s and it seemed like the opposite started to become the case. Rather than creating more, it was like, how can we consolidate? And it also seemed like there was this, I don't know, general, I, this may be projecting probably, but this general optimism about comics where the writers and the publishers were like, yeah, we're, you know, we want to keep Sam Wilson the Falcon because, you know, we think that there's always a possibility that the character gets more popular and we get him into the right costume or the right creative team, whatever. And then suddenly this is another big ongoing comic for us. It was like every character was kind of created with the idea that, you know, this character, we may, we may strike it big basically with this character. And I think that that optimism was, uh, was, was frankly, was nice. And so as a result, you've had a lot of comics being built up. You had a lot of characters being built up. And I think maybe the general, again, maybe I'm calling it optimism. Maybe it's arrogance. I, I don't know. Just the general feeling that, hey, anything is possible here and uh, we could actually make a lot of money if we just get the formula just right. And as a result, I think you see, uh, you, saw, you, saw a lot of, you, you saw a lot of comics come up. Um, I think what, uh, what, what has changed, as I mentioned, is that there, be, there seemed to be a lack of confidence that started to settle in, where uh, comic creators were like, I, you know, the Falcon's never going to sell. As the Falcon. You know, we're, we're never going to get this character over like this. So instead, you know, let's, uh, you know, the only way to get this character to be popular is if we call him Captain America and we make him Captain America. If we do that, you know, people know who Captain America is. And then, then we will get the readership. Then we will be able to actually have a strong selling comic. But we're going to be selling it off of Captain America because, you know, who's going to buy, who's going to buy the Falcon? You know, I, I think that that's, uh, that's the big change that happened is there was a lack of confidence in the, in the characters that they could actually sell themselves. And so they started to take what feels like shortcuts and, you know, what feels like shortcuts in order to get the character over. Uh, sorry, I had to you know, just, just rearrange the phone there. Sorry for the audio quality. There. Ah, you know, hey, who are you kidding? You've been listening to this channel for a while. Uh, anyway, to me, that's, that's what happened. So I guess the question goes for you. First of all, am I remembering this wrong? Because I've had the same argument. People come in going, hey, you're talking about how comics have always been. This is, uh, this is always what comics have been like. And this is you basically remembering it wrong. And I just don't think that's the case. I think it, it's, it's not. I, I think that there was a definite change. And I think it happened sometime around the 90s when there seemed to be the late 90s where people seemed to have a lot less confidence in, in comics. Uh, from the creator standpoint, it seemed to be a bit of a, a hunker down kind of mentality. And if I was if I was being you know full on down with this theory, you could say the crash spooked people, and the fact that you know you had the image creators leave, and you had this indie market build up, and everything else, and you had some really popular comics at the time with uh, Transformers and other things that that suddenly got more popular. So the idea of original IP started to become less attractive. And so given that, you know that that. It basically, people withdrew. I think there's maybe some truth to that, but you tell me. What do you think? Has this always been the case like this? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.